Hey, good morning, Facebook world. Good morning. Good morning. Or should we say morning? Because, you know, sometimes it's just morning. a morning. And morning. <laughs> after you've been to staff development all weekend and traveled, and it morning. might be a morning for me. I don't know. What about you, Connor? Is it a good morning or is it a morning? Uh, it's a morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's a morning. I wasn't at staff development, but it's a morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, I mean, everyone stayed up late watching the Chiefs yep. game last night, mm-hmm. so everyone's a little bit... We need that extra cup of coffee today, right? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy Monday. We're super excited to start our week together today. Morning, Rebecca. It's a morning for Rebecca. <laughs> um... What are we doing today? It's a Monday. Let's just say it's a Monday. You know, what's what's fascinating to me is, as most of you know, we're in this high neighbor challenge, and it's 29 days to love your neighbor. And so it's been a blast, actually, because, um, you know, how do we define our neighbor? Well, one who's in close proximity to us. And what's fascinating is I wanted to kind of look at this from a biblical perspective. So we're looking at that command, love your neighbor as yourself. And there's 10 verses in the Old Testament and New Testament that specifically say, love your neighbor, love your neighbor, love your neighbor. But this one really like just jumped off the page at me and it's out of Galatians and it says, For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. And I was like really blown away by that, you know, because Jesus says, you know, the greatest commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. The second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And so what's so fascinating to me is that literally according to Galatians 5:14 that the entire law is fulfilled with keeping this one commandment. And so Connor and I've been kind of just talking about this this morning. Uh Savannah likes your shirt, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Supporting it. I got you. <laughs> Representing And what's so fascinating to me, I started thinking about, like, of course, the Old Testament law and the Ten Commandments. And it's like, if we truly love our neighbor as ourself, like, we won't covet our neighbor's wife. And we won't steal from someone. And we won't Mm. kill someone. And we won't, you know what I mean? It's mind-blowing to think about this one command, love your neighbor as yourself, how that literally fulfills the entire Old Testament Ten Commandments and beyond, really. Yeah, because once you think about it, like Jesus says he came to fulfill the law, not to destroy it. So if the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, like he fulfilled that, and that's who he was. It's like love love your neighbor was like Jesus' essence almost because like he fulfilled the law, which is quite interesting. Never, never thought about it like that. Yeah, that's so good. And, you know, even a step beyond that, you know, could that be why when Jesus healed on the Sabbath, you know, and the Pharisees are like, you're breaking the law. He's like, no, I'm fulfilling the law. Mm -hmm. Because he's healing because he loves his neighbor as himself. And he sees someone who needs healing and the Holy Spirit whispers to heal him and he obeys and they're healed, you know. It's just, it's so challenging and it's just so profound to really think that we could fulfill the entire Old Testament law through this one command. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I wanted Connor to share, just like Connor has been here in Toledo, Ohio for um, about three weeks, a little over three weeks. And he had the most hilarious thing happen to us regarding our physical neighbor here, you know, in our neighborhood. (laughs) And it was really cool because even though it was like this crazy fluke thing, like I felt like it like opened the door for us to be able to love our neighbor. So I'm going to have him share that story. So, um, 
I have been writing letters every morning to Autumn back home, and ever since I got here, I don't know why, but I put, it was uh, 5117 Bainbridge Road um, that I was putting on it, but that is not Christy and Paul's address. It's actually their neighbor's address, which is hilarious. Um, So when I've gotten mail, um, it's actually sent to that house. And I get this random call, like, so I know I'm expecting, you know, a few, uh, you know, mail. And uh, so I get this random call one day, and this guy's like, is this Connor Patrick? I was like, yes. I said, I think I have your mail. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. I'm at 5117 Bainbridge Road. He said, that's my house. <laughs> and so it was just funny. But... uh he, uh, I went over and brought him actually, uh, for a peace offering, <laughs> a bag of apples, um, to get my mail. So, uh, he was really cool with it though. And, uh, just really nice, but it was just a cool way to express, uh, loving your neighbor. So. Yeah. Well, what was funny is I had been at the grocery store that day, you know, and at Meyer they had like buy one, get one free apples, you know, and it's like this huge bag of bougie Gosh. apples. And I'm thinking, I mean, our family would eat a bag in a week, but two bags, like, you know, that's not going to happen and I'm going to be throwing them away. And so it was really cool to just be like, you know what? Why don't we, I was going to give them away to somebody. I was like, hey, why don't you take that over to our neighbor as like this peace offering because Mm -hmm. he's now collected like every Amazon package you've ordered, all of your mail, you know? (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) And he's like, and we don't really even know him well because, you know, we haven't been here super long. And so it was just a really cool opportunity uh, on a practical note to just think in those terms like what if we thought in those terms like we're at the grocery store and we see the bogo deal whatever it is buy one sausage get one free or whatever and you know we're we're sharing those with our neighbors mm. whether that's a physical neighbor whether that's you know a coworker, whether that's a friend whether whoever that is but it opens such a cool door because you know, I even remember you and Asher talking about like, you know, when you went to the door, like, I mean, I'm sure he's a bit annoyed or whatever, but when you hand him something like, yeah. hey, you know, we just want to share this with you, like it really diffuses and opens the door for further conversation, yeah. you Because know? he wasn't expecting it, so <laughs> yeah. he's like, oh, thank you, <laughs> but. Yeah, so it was awesome. Do you guys have any questions for Connor? If you have any questions, you want to just put them right here on the spot. We would love to do that. Yes, please do. (laughs) Please do. (laughs) So if you have any questions for him, he's finishing up this week in Toledo. And uh, he will actually be going to Oklahoma City next to, to that hub. And then on to Aiken, South Carolina. Uh, Lebanon, Tennessee is right before Aiken. And so we um, would just really love to answer your questions. Um, If you could sum up the internship here in Toledo, Connor, in just a few sentences, Mm. how would you describe it? What would you say? I don't know. I think that's really, really hard. (laughs) I think you're asking something that's on a Monday. Near and yeah, on a Monday. <laughs> Go asking. ahead and sip your coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take another drink. Um, I think probably one thing that's coming to my mind right now is the fact how everyone here has poured into me. Um, like everyone that I've interacted with has poured into me and that has blessed me. Um, I think one of the biggest things that the Lord's teaching me is like, um, you know, he, um, actually Sarah was talking about it yesterday, um, preaching yesterday in church, but, uh, like he doesn't just give you the blessing so that you keep it for yourself, but he gives you the blessing so that you can give the blessing to others. Um, and that's the same thing with, um, everything that's been poured into me. Like I don't just, I'm not receiving everything so that I can keep it and I can go, but like I get poured into so that I can pour into other people everything that I've been poured into with. Um, 
so that's one thing that's just kind of been on my mind lately. Um, and so I'm excited to do that and just how many people have just, uh, prayed over me and, uh, just imparted things. It's just wild. Like people that I've met the day of and like they're like already just giving away everything they have. So I think that's a level of, as far as the body loving your neighbor is that aspect. Like we are to love each other in that way as neighbors, like to just pour out everything we have, you know? Mm -hmm. I really believe we talked about this in Tennessee this weekend, you know, carry city, sorry, cities carry anointings. Mm -hmm. And you can clearly see that in Joshua, like where it talks about, you know, cities of refuge and, uh, you know, different cities throughout, throughout the Bible. So as you've been in Toledo these last few weeks, I know it's a very short time, you know, and you're still learning, but you know, what is the anointing, the strengths, uh, the, the destiny that you see in Toledo as compared to some of the other cities that you've been a part of? What are some of the things you've watched here and noticed? Um, and then we'll answer that one that Jake has, but, um, the, the biggest thing for me is probably the, the amount of pastors that get together. And I I think that, that, that'll answer your question, Jake, by the way, you spelled my name wrong. I've known you forever and you spelled my name wrong. So not, yeah. Anyways, but cool. Cool. Casper. I think one of the coolest, one of my favorite moments, um, is getting to see that, getting to see 35 leaders and pastors come together once a month and pray and um, worship together. Like they put away their agenda, they put away what they want to get across their denomination, like everything like that, and they just come together and praise the Lord. Um, And I've never seen that in a city before. So that is probably the biggest thing that I see Toledo's strengths in is like they've already plowed so much and they already have this established like just imagine in five years you know it is going to cause other people to lay down their agendas like they have but I mean it's happened 35 people so like I I imagine it can happen to others so um and it also can happen in other cities too like this is not the only one um but I think yeah this is definitely Toledo has such an anointing in that, like, um, the poverty and all the stuff that makes it seem like, you know, not a good city, (laughs) like, but there's so much depth and riches, um, that the Lord has here. And I think it's, I think it's with, um, unity in, in the churches and unity in the community. So... Awesome. We have a mom moment I want to take special note of. I may not have a question, but I think you're super cute and love your heart so much. That's so sweet. Lori, how about a little, we need a little more embarrassment from the mom. I like to embarrass my 22-year-old son too, so thank you for... (laughs) Yes, thank you. Yeah, it looks like Jake's on his way to work, and so he said... uh, Man, that autocorrect is a killer, you know, when you're dictating. I forgive you, bro. I forgive you. (laughs) Awesome. Well, Connor, we're going to close here and let our listeners get on with their day. But I wondered if you could pray for each one, uh, those live and those who will listen to this at some point through YouTube, that kind of thing, and Mm -hmm. really just extend blessing over them as they start their week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Lord, I just thank you uh, for the opportunity that you give us, Father. I thank you for media for this reason that we can uh, reach a variety of people, um, you know, as they're on their way to work or as they're just sitting at home not doing anything. But Lord, I just thank you for that platform that we have that you've blessed us with um, to use for your glory. I just bless everyone uh, that's watching right now and uh, that will watch this, Father. Um, the Lord loves you and he, he desires to bless you. He desires to fill you with his spirit. Um, so everything, Father, that I've received um, this 
this internship so far. I just release um, to everyone that's watching and everyone that's going to watch this, Father, that you just bless them with every blessing that you have for them, Father, and that you would just uh, begin to wake them up in the middle of the night and show them their destiny and the plans that you have for them, Father, and uh, just create uh, something so beautiful within them. Um, we love you and we praise you, Father, um, and we believe in you. In your name, amen. Amen. We hope you have an amazing day. Uh, we bless you. We hope you're joining in on the High Neighbor campaign. If you would like those sent to you, all you have to do is go to our page in Kindle Ministries, probably on my page too, Christy Austin, and sign up for the 29-day High Neighbor Challenge. We got lots of fun stuff. Do it. Uh, Today, actually, the challenge is to write a letter to someone and encourage them and slip it in the mail. That's you, isn't it? Yes. Have you figured out who you're going to write your letter to, oh, Connor? No idea. Yeah. But the Lord's going to give it to me in the next 30 minutes. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Have a great day.